Hello, welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to look at something that is near and dear to my heart and is not a Chinese pen, and that's great finds on eBay auctions. So you see in front of you a pen that those of you that follow my channel might look familiar, but it is a little different. It's a Parker Slimfold. Here's the auction. I got it at an excellent price. Uh, it came from a um, U.S. seller, so it uh, arrived very, very quickly. And, you know, this is basically I paid for what you would pay for a pen BBS pen. And I think that for what this pen is and the nib and, and the quality, it was an excellent buy. So it's a very recognizable clip there. This pen was probably made sometime around the late 50s to mid 60s. You have a nice uh, geometric pattern there on that very thin cap band. You do have some model identification and it is quite fine. So it's made in England. It is slim fold and it is Parker. Now these are known for not having really deep markings on them, so it's nice that this is even readable. You have a nice opening there at the end, which I'm certain facilitates the filling mechanism. You have your traditional holes in the cap that are there for uncapping purposes, so when that first couple turns of the screw, it doesn't create a vacuum in there and then pull ink on the nib. This is a nice 14 karat nib. And I have a fondness in my heart for UK pens from the 50s and early 60s. I have a number of Conway Stewart's, I have other Parker's, I have some Waterman's, and they all have phenomenal nibs. And I haven't written with this one and haven't inked up this pen. I've just cleaned it and it required very little cleaning. There was a little bit of ink left in it, but that's nice. And this is labeled a number five nib. According to uh, Richard Binder, this was the next to the smallest nib and they made up to uh, I think a 20. A little bit of ink there in the threads. I'll clean that out a little bit later. You unscrew and you reveal the classic aerometric filler. You know, this is the original filler. You know, you need to press it a couple times to get it to be a full fill. As we get the camera to focus, you have to be patient with that. And they certainly do mark it that it's from London. And this is usually a clear silicone, and these sacks are known for having longevity to them, but obviously at some point in time there was a purplish ink in there that stained the silicone. I flushed this, I've let it soak for a couple days, so I'm, I'm pretty certain I've gotten out all the ink that's still left there that's water soluble, and the, and the stuff that's stained there is just never going to come out. So let's uh, compare this pen to some other pens that might be of interest, just for comparison's sake. We have to zoom out a little bit because these other pens are larger. So we can see the slim fold. This is the Victory, one of the Mark IVs, I think. And they're almost identical, except this one is smaller by probably about 10 or 15 percent. Then we have a beautiful Conway Stewart, a 73L. And then we have the Waterman's uh, W5, which I also got on eBay, which I thought was a good buy. I did uh, buy it from an English seller, so it took a little bit longer time to get here, and it, and it cost more for postage. But all of these pens I really enjoy writing with. All of them have great nibs, and all of them I felt were a very good buy on eBay. It's good to show the relative size of the pen. So here's a Pen BBS 308 or 266. Your slim fold, which is obviously shorter, thinner, everything else. Um, could be called a ladies pen. Some people have been stretching the definition of pocket pen, so in theory it could be a pocket pen. And this is your Jinhao 992. So that's kind of in between the size. And I consider the pen BBS to be almost a perfect size from my viewpoint of writing and comfort and the section and, and things of that nature. So all these pens post very well. That classic design, kind of cigar-shaped design, is uh, 
lends itself to, to posting. And the slim fold now is about the same length as the 992, so that's nice, but obviously from the section and nib, it's going to be different. And let's take a closer look at these. So the Pen BBS is a number six nib, and it is substantially larger than the number five, which is a Parker numbering system and unique to Parker. And then in the Jinhao 992, you have a standard number five, and this is the one that I put a Knox number five in it because uh, I enjoyed a little bit different nib in there. So there is a substantial size difference, and this is certainly a small nib, but as we know, sometimes size is not the most important criteria. So here are these examples of the sections and nibs, and they're all pretty much on the small side, I would say, you know, the 9 to 10 millimeter size, and, and we'll give you those dimensions for the slim fold when I get into the writing session. Um, as we scroll down here to take a look at the overall length, you know, the slim fold is about the length of the Waterman W5, but the Waterman W5 has a little bit more girth, not significant, but over long periods of writing, you're going to definitely notice the difference. I like the fact that the Parkers have sections of the same material and color as the barrel and cap, whereas the Waterman and the Conway Stewart have those black sections, which are generic and you know, you can make a bunch of them and use them with different colored pens, and so that there's some savings involved in that. I aesthetically uh, enjoy having the section the same material and color as the barrel and cap. Some of my viewers have asked on occasion um, where I would recommend they buy a vintage pen from, and I've given a few recommendations, but I did some um, searching for the Parker Slimfold and found a fair number of them on Peyton Street Pens. Here's the website. And here's some examples of the pens that were listed there. Obviously more money than what you would pay on eBay, but then you're getting a U.S. supplier and you have some type of guarantee if you're concerned about, you know, not being, you know, the pen will come completely working order in which I had no guarantee that the one I got on eBay would work properly. So that's an option. Um, explore as you see fit. So there's always a question as to what ink to put in it. So I recently got some ink samples, and I love that chromatography. It's Organic Studios. I got a nice little sample from Goulet Pens when I got my uh, Passporte, Passporto Stealth. So I got a couple Organic Studios, and Ernest Hemingway and Ralph Waldo Emerson are the two most impressive. You know, here we did our usual globbing it onto Toma River paper, and I would say they're pretty much a sheen fest. And I think a little bit even comes out in the writing, so it'll be interesting to see how this ink works and what type of effects you can get with the Parker Slimfold. I'm a firm believer in um, not wasting paper, so this is the second page that the jellyfish ink bled through on when I spilled ink from the bottle. This is a small pen, but it does fit in the hand without posting, and as we know from the review, it posts fine, posts secure, doesn't change the weight at all. This section is very small, we'll give you those dimensions. You know, here's the weight of the pen, the length of the pen, things like that. So enough discussion, let's put ink to paper. I mean, the first thing that comes across with this nib is it is very, very smooth, good flow. This is a really dark blue ink. I don't think we're going to see any real variations in it or shimmer or anything, and it doesn't seem to be a shading ink. I mean, it's just a pleasure to write with, which is one of the things that all my other pens from England from the 50s all have great nibs. They just work. Flow is excellent. 
This one is probably the stiffest of all my nibs. I mean, it's a little soft and you get a little bit of spread and, and a little bit more ink flow, but it's certainly nowhere in, in the flex category, but it's just a pleasant, pleasant writer. And for the price, I'm extremely happy to be able to pick this up and added it to my collection. And it's like a little brother to the Red Victory pen. So this was just a quick review, just a show you that there are still bargains to be had in the uh, in amazing world of vintage pens you have to look and know what you're looking for but over time that can happen so thank you for watching we've reached the end of this video hopefully this is encouraging to you to explore even more and delve into the incredible variety of pens inks nibs papers that we have available to us in our community. So bye for now. Until next time.